And to the big story of the morning, the GST rate cut on under construction uh, buildings uh, reduced from to, uh, 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 reduced to five percent from twelve percent and uh, to one percent on affordable housing. Sujin Choksi, managing director of Grow Finance, with us. Uh, good morning, Mr. Choksi. Thank you very much. Uh, we know that there is a lot of unsold inventory, especially in the under construction space. How much will this help? Uh, see, I think you know the reduction to the five percent without uh, offset of the input credit cost. Mm. I don't think it is going to make much of the difference. Uh, but as far as affordable housing is concerned, the one percent uh, reduction, I think it's uh, quite an uh, attractive uh, reduction for the end user, and I think that should uh, reduce overall cost as far as the end user is concerned. Okay, uh, you know what we heard from builders is that. Uh, uh, they have already paid input. Ta they have already paid uh, uh, GST on cement and several other inputs for the houses that are under construction, and now they can't pass it on. So they may have to absorb a cost of three to four percent. Some people even say six percent, or they have to pass it on, which will be very difficult in this market. Uh, is this complaint only for premium houses, or is it for even beyond premium houses? Uh it would be for both, no, because if they have already paid GST on the material which they have purchased under the construction, uh, uh, obviously, you know, there is no credit of the uh, offset. So obviously, they'll have to bear that cost. Mr. Choksi, uh, so, I mean, you're saying that at least in the affordable housing section, this reduction in uh, GST should be beneficial. Can you give us some sense of how that could show up in numbers? Let's say for GRU itself, Q3 was very sluggish. There were a lot of issues, island affairs, credit market tightness, etc., uh, because of which even disbursements were on the lower side. Q4, what are the trends? And when this kicks in, first quarter of FY20, then what is the kind of increase in your business, let's say, that you would expect? I think, you know, that GST is not the only reason that, you know, that uh, demand has not improved. I think the real estate sector is going through a difficult period. Uh, you know, this is a probably, in my opinion, this is a sixth year in succession that, you know, uh, real estate sector has been intensified year after because of it's like demonetization where uh, GST. And obviously, there has been a big demand. So, you know, this uh, reduction probably may improve the sentiments as far as the end user is concerned. Uh, but other than that, I think the demand will continue to be a weak. I don't see that, you know, the demand situation will improve at least during this calendar year. Uh, we'll have to wait and watch what happens uh, post-monsoon and when uh, auspicious season of uh, Diwali comes this uh, financial year. I okay. think probably that time we'll get a clear signal as to whether the market is improving or not. It's a long haul, sir, Diwali. Uh, uh, Mr. Choksi, we are coming to your numbers, uh, but it's just that such a big news has broken over the weekend that we thought we should ask you a little bit on that. Uh, you know, if you only take the category of affordable housing, what is the uh, inventory over there? Uh, you know, we were told by some experts that for the entire housing space, inventory or unsold houses have risen by about four times over the last five years. But what is it in the affordable housing category? And will the redefinition of affordable housing as 45 lakhs instead of 25 lakhs improve the demand? What benefit does it give the buyer? Uh, see, first of all, you know, that uh, redefining, you know, the affordable cost from 13 lakhs to 40 lakhs, 5 lakhs is marginally improvement as far as uh, with the customer sitting on the fence of that 30 lakhs and 45 lakhs. So I think there will be a reduction in the cost uh, of the GST which they will pay. Uh, however, uh, we will have to see as to how much cost benefit uh, uh, developer would be in a position to pass on uh, because it is uh, input cost remains high. Mm -hmm. He might not be able to change and pass on the much of the cost. But sentimentally or psychologically, end user will see he is paying much lower GST. Is there a lot of inventory uh, so even in affordable housing, or only in larger houses? Inventory, I think you know, on affordable housing there is not much of the okay. in inventory, and you know the supply anyway is overall less. I think mm -hmm. if you look at uh, some of the statistics in the state of uh, Gujarat and Ahmedabad, which uh, I was, uh, you know, looking at, uh, of the total number of projects which have been approved by RERA, I think, you know, the housing is only around 30-31%. And uh, of that, only 10% has been completed ever oh. since uh, RERA has come. 
Okay. Uh, I think the things have been moving at a much slower pace in the on the ground. That is my sense. I mean, that brings me to the next question, sir. Again, on the numbers. Now, in Q3, your disbursements are down 31 percent. Is that a function of poor demand, or is that a function of the tightness in the money markets, or maybe a mix of both? And does it improve in Q4, or is this what you've seen in much of this quarter as well? Uh, I think the quarter three. I think there are uh, multiple uh, factors. Obviously, the real estate sector has been going through a weak demand, uh, but. Uh, during the third quarter we had consciously gone uh, slow in the month of october and november because of the liquidity crunch and we were uh, you know building up the liquidity deposit ourselves uh, you would have seen that we were carrying a liquidity deposit of approximately around 1500 to 1600 crores uh, second thing you know the, for a corresponding period we had a quite a good disbursement uh, Uh, because of the affordable push which was being given under the credit in subsidy uh, and i think going forward even for the fourth quarter i don't expect any major change from the you know quarter third uh, the december obviously the disbursements were better than october november and probably i think same rate in december we might continue oh that's not very uh, positive sir but what about spreads uh, do you expect uh, you know even margins have fallen for you uh to 3.96 from 4.89 this is our own calculation so you have to tell us if it's correct uh will uh, will there be more pressure see i think you know the uh, nims have fallen that is correct observation uh, from your end but you must understand what has happened that you know because we were carrying the liquid deposit i think there is a negative drag uh, because of that and that's why me there if you were to exclude the uh, you know the carrying cost of the de- deposit probably and i would be four plus uh, and i think probably with the next quarter also because we have continued to carry the liquidity deposit and therefore uh, i don't expect any major change as far as our quarter four performance is concerned when compared to the quarter three Oh, okay, okay, sir. Okay, all right, uh, Mr. Choksi. I guess uh, so. It is a bit of a sluggish patch. Let's see how long it lasts. Thank you for uh, those candid comments and thoughts as well. That is the word from Groove Finance. But challenging Q3, and maybe it continues in Q4.